Christ Church. I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> when I was here last time, there were only 20 or so people. Now I've got all of you and all of you over here. And the choir is wonderful. That is just absolutely magnificent. In the liturgical schedule today is the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. On the secular calendar, it's Father's Day, so happy fathers who are in here have a, have a great day. And on the federal calendar, yesterday was Juneteenth for the first time. So it's been an active weekend, and I hope you're enjoying it. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name, for you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. reading today is from the book of Job. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out of the womb? When I made the cloud its garment and the thick darkness its swaddling band? and prescribed bounds for it, and set bars and doors, and said, Thus far you shall come, and no further, and here shall your proud ways be stopped. The word of the Lord. The psalm today is Psalm 107, verses 1 through 3, and 23 through 32 in your program. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim that he redeemed them from the hand of the foe. He gathered them out of the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some went down to the sea in ships and plied their trade in deep waters. They beheld the works of the Lord, and his wonderful. 
a reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. The love of Christ urges us on because we are convinced that one has died for all. Therefore, all have died. And he died for all so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, 
Do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead call. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? They came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gerasenes. And when he had stepped out of the boat, immediately a man of the tombs with an unclean spirit met him. He lived among the tombs, and no one could restrain him any more, even with a chain, for he had often been restrained with shackles and chains. But the chains he wrenched apart, and the shackles he broke in pieces, and no one had the strength to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and on the mountains he was always howling and bruising himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and bowed down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. For Jesus had said to him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? He replied, My name is Legion, for we are many. Now there on the hillside a great herd of swine was feeding, and the unclean spirits begged him, Send us into the swine, let us enter them. So he gave permission, and the unclean spirits came out and entered the swine, and they rushed down the steep bank into the sea and were drowned. The swineherds ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came to see what it was that had happened. They came to Jesus and saw the demoniac sitting there, clothed and in his right mind, the very man who had had the legion, and they were afraid. And they began to beg Jesus to leave their neighborhood. As he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed by demons begged him that he might be with him. But Jesus refused and said to him, Go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and what mercy he has shown you. And he went away and began to proclaim in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him. And everyone was amazed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, o Lord our God. Please be seated. On that day, when evening had come, Jesus said to them, Let us go across to the other side. With these words, Jesus begins a journey with his disciples. And like them, we too begin a journey. Our journey is to find a new rector for Christ Church Valdosta. Every significant loss leads to a period of grief, and I know that many of you are saddened. Me too. However, let us consider this to be yet another instance of God leading us in new directions. And sometimes we just simply have to trust in God's grace to do just that. Our goal is to successfully reach the other side of the journey. 
that is a successful call to your next rector. How long will that take? Will it be a journey with calm seas, a clearly defined coastland ahead, or might there be some wind that kicks up, maybe a storm or two of some kind ahead? Before getting any more anxious than we might already be, we can take comfort in today's gospel. Jesus desperately needs some downtime. He is literally exhausted because he's been dealing with crowds who beg for his healing. They look to him for what he brings, new life. Jesus and his disciples set out in the early evening, and Jesus lays down to catch some sleep. Soon thereafter, the wind picks up, it is dark, thunder and lightning. The waves get nasty, and soon they fear for their very lives. In a panic, they wake Jesus up. Teacher, do you not care that we are dying? As soon as he wakes up, Jesus immediately exorcises the storm. There are two exorcisms in this gospel today, this being the first. And he says to the storm, peace, be still. These are the very same words that Jesus used in an earlier chapter in Mark to heal a man possessed by a demon. And immediately, the storm calmed. Jesus turns to his disciples and asks them, where was your faith? Faith here is more than just what the disciples believed. It is their ability to take appropriate actions when confronted with chaos. Because of the storm and winds, their boat is blown off course, and instead of landing in Bethsaida, they arrive on the eastern shore in an area known as the Decapolis. And there, in that location for me, is one of the most memorable pieces of literature. It is haunting. In darkness, they land next to a cemetery where among the tombs lives a crazed man possessed by demons. He is smashing himself with stones and was bound with chains and fetters to restrain him. In the religious culture of that day, for every reason possible, he is deemed ritually unclean and therefore shunned by all. He is alone, except for the legion of demons that possess his body and mind. A Roman legion, by the way, which is the reference here, was composed of 6,000 men. Imagine that many demons. The stage is set. The challenge is defined. Is there anyone any power at all that can possibly heal such monstrous evil. It may seem odd that the demons immediately recognize Jesus addressing him as Jesus, son of the Most High God. This is done very clever to contrast the lack of recognition by his own disciples and their inability to know Jesus for exactly who he is son of the most high God. They still doubt. Jesus now exorcises the demoniac, and the exorcism fully demonstrates his power and who he is. There is not a doubt. But not only does it reveal himself, it reveals his love for one who was rejected by every other. In this gospel, there are storms without, there are storms within, and then there is Jesus revealed. Jesus and his disciples journeyed into the unknown. Never once did they turn back. Had they not ventured forward, true, there may have been little risk, but more importantly, there would have been no growth. And recall the story's end. All that was feared all that was demonic 
was vanquished and replaced with new life. Good people of Christ Church, remember Jesus' words, peace, be still. With those words to guide us forward, we can deal with any storm that may come up along the way. Because in the midst of whatever trial we might face, there will be Jesus revealed. Now I want to be very clear at this junction. Hear me. I am not suggesting that your search committee go out and meet some lunatic somewhere <laughs> and call him. No way. You have enough of a lunatic right here in front of your eyes. <laughs> but please remember this. When Jesus did meet the one who no one else wanted, Jesus didn't reject him. He did not retreat from him. He did not diagnose him or hate him, nor did he fear him, because Jesus saw the person or who he was within. Sometimes what is least expected is where we are led, and for some wonderful reason. So let's be open to all that the good Lord might have in store for us, wherever it leads, because there we will find new life. Being human means that we're vulnerable. What lies ahead may to some of you feel overwhelming, but look at us. We are the baptized. We've been through the waters of baptism, and we've been made stronger over the years with whatever storms we've weathered. And now we gather around this holy table for the meal of Christ's actual presence, where we will be made strong for the journey. Allow me to close by leaving you with two images. And to accomplish this, if you would please trust me gently Close your eyes for just a few seconds, please. Just a few seconds. Close your eyes. Image one. On that day, when evening had come, Jesus said to them, Let us go across to the other side. Image two. On that distant shore, everyone experienced the new life that only Jesus could bring them. And everyone was amazed. You may open your eyes. Welcome to the journey. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God of the Father, God of God, light and light, true God and true God, begotten God. God. God.
3, on page 387. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. We pray your blessing on Christ's Church as we receive your grace in Jesus Christ and share that grace with one another and the world. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Frank, our bishop, Scott, our retired bishop, for Dave, our priest, Peter, our retired priest, Walter, Stella, Patricia, and Nancy, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for Joe, our president, Brian, our governor, for those serving in the armed forces, and all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer for any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for the sick and troubled, especially Kathy Armstrong, Kathy. Katie Carter, Katie. Jan Carter, Jan. Beth Cowart, Beth. S.J. Denmark, SJ. Laura Payne, Laura. Uh, Baby Rocky. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our Lord. pleasure to be with you again. You may be seated. It's good to be with you on this wonderful day. Despite the rain this morning, and I know we needed it, we've started on our journey. We ask, I ask your prayers for the vestry as they lead this parish in the search. As your senior warden has already, already communicated with you, there is a plan to have an interim in place in a few weeks, however long that might be, that interim will be able to not only spend more time with you, but help to direct the search process along with the leadership of the vestry, something I wouldn't be able to do. But until that point in time, I'm so happy and privileged to be with you during these Sundays in between. So we journey together and it's a pleasure being back with you. Let us with gladness present the offerings of our lives and our labors to the Lord our God.
up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as the your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You have blessed in spiritual fruits, and the sacrament of the body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage, to love us and serve you, to guide us in the same as our heart, and to our soul. Amen. Almighty God, we pray for the guidance of the Holy Spirit as we seek to be record for Christ. You know the needs and the task that lies in it. In our search, we ask you. We ask for your direction and insight to perceive the leader you would choose for us. We further pray, O oh Lord, that in this time of waiting, we may all devote ourselves afresh to your service so that nothing be lost of the faithful work of the past, but rather that it may be brought to a rich harvest in the years to come. All this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Blessing of God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.